Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You know, sometimes we cover stories that are just, well, they're stranger than fiction. Yeah. And today's one of those days. We're taking a look at Jay Johnston. Okay. And um, he's a Hollywood actor who, well, let's just say his career took a bit of an unexpected turn after that whole January 6th Capitol riot thing. Right, right. And we're basing all this on excerpts from a file called podcast.txt. Interesting. It's pretty wild. I mean, you've got this guy, a comedic actor, known for making people laugh, mm -hmm. and he ends up embroiled in one of the most serious events in recent American history. It is pretty wild. I mean, you think of Jay Johnston, you think of old Jimmy Pesto from Bob's Burgers, right? right. Or some of his roles in Arrested Development. Exactly. I mean, those are hilarious shows. Yeah. And then you see him caught up in something as dark as the Capitol riot. It's, it's a real head scratcher. It is. So let's get into it. The file actually goes into some detail about what Johnston was doing during the riot, and it's not pretty. Yeah, like, it wasn't just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ah, oh, I see. He was pushing against police lines using a stolen riot shield. Wow. He was even filming the whole thing as it was happening. Really? Yeah. And get this, he was part of what they call a shield wall. A shield wall? What's that? It's this tactic where rioters use well, stolen police shields, to form a line and just push against the officers, injuring them. Oh, wow. So it was... Yeah. That's aggressive, yeah. It's not just about being there. It's actively participating in violence, you know? Absolutely. So naturally, there were legal consequences. I would imagine so, yeah. He ended up pleading guilty to one count of civil disorder, which, for our listeners out there, is a federal offense. Right. It essentially means disrupting government functions through violence or, like... The threat of violence. It's serious stuff. It is. And because of that, he got a sentence of a year and a day in federal prison, plus a $2,000 restitution fee. A year and a day, huh? Yeah. And his defense team actually argued that his fame made him a target. They said the government was making an example out of him. Hmm. That's interesting. So being a recognizable face could actually work against you in a situation like this. Seems like it. Uh -huh. And they also claimed he was blacklisted by Hollywood after January 6th, which forced him to take on, like, odd jobs to survive. Wow. That's tough. Like, fame gives you a platform, but it also puts your actions under a microscope, right? Definitely. And it makes you wonder about his actions after January 6th, too. Did he, like, express remorse or... Well, about that. Yeah. He downplayed the attack, called it a setup. Which, a setup? Yeah, which, you know, something we see sometimes, people trying to minimize their involvement, blaming someone else. Mm. Shifting the responsibility to her. Mm. It makes you wonder if it's, I don't know, a coping mechanism or something. Right, like a way to rationalize actions that they can't really reconcile with how they see themselves. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. It's complicated, the psychology of it all. It is. And and this is where it gets even more interesting. He dressed up as the QAnon shaman for Halloween in 2022. Well, what? No way. The guy with the horns and the... Yep, that yeah. guy. That's... It's hard to see that as anything other than, like, a total lack of remorse. Yeah, I can see why the prosecutor saw it that way and pushed for a harsher sentence. Yeah. It's not exactly taking responsibility, is it? Not really. It's almost like a... a defiance. Yeah, defiance. <laughs> so here we have this guy, a comedian gets caught up in this major political event, faces legal consequences, and then does things that just make the whole situation messier. It's like a train wreck you can't look away from. It kind of is. And it really highlights the ripple effects of January 6th. You know, we're talking about legal consequences, but it also caused these deep social divisions and blurred the lines between entertainment and politics. Yeah, no doubt. It's all just so... So messy. Yeah, messy. And it leaves us with some big questions. Like what? Well... Like, can we separate an artist's work from their personal actions? Should we? And what does it even mean to hold public figures accountable? Those are tough questions. They are. It's not easy to find those answers. Nope. So, yeah, this deep dive has taken us from Hollywood to a federal prison sentence. It's wild. And it shows how much power our choices have and how even worlds that seem completely separate can collide in the most unexpected ways. Couldn't have said it better myself. What do you think, listener? How do you deal with the whole art versus personal beliefs thing, especially when it comes to public figures? It's a conversation worth having, so let's keep it going. Yeah, let's... Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. And remember, there's always more to uncover. Always. See you next time. Bye. Bye.